Good morning once again and praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This week, Wednesday, we continue reflecting on the appeal to Christian unity. Continue to reflect on uh, Romans chapter 15 and John chapter 17. The topic today is unity is strengthened by scripture and sustained by hope. Lord, we commit this day to you and also we commit your word to you. Lord, I pray that you will use me as a vessel to speak to your people. And Lord, Lord you will hasten their hearts to receive this word according to your will and your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday we reflected on the appeal for the strong to support the weak. And today topic is unity is strengthened by scripture and sustained by hope. Verse 2 to 3 of Romans 15 says, each one of you should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Paul defines what pleasing means by settling down three qualifications, that is from verse two to three, that we please people by working toward the good of others. Second, that we please others by working towards the edification of others, and also we please others by following Jesus Christ's example. The first qualification for pleasing men is that we must please our neighbors for our neighbor for his good. The good of our neighbor must be understood in the light of God's eternal purpose for his elect as spoken in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work toward for good to those who love God, to those who are called to his purpose. Seeking the good of our neighbor must begin by seeking his salvation. For only those who love God are, are the called according to his purpose. We are called according to his purpose when we are in salvation and can expect or experience God's eternal good. His purpose and his kingdom. This good is not to be confused with our neighbor's comfort or their pleasure. In order to enter into the goodness of God, we must endure suffering and tribulation that we can see in Romans chapter 5, 3 to 11, and chapter 8, 12 to 13. Our neighbor's good, which begins with salvation, should then press to on his edification. We must seize and detest from every attitude and action which will tear down our neighbor, pressing, pressing on which those things which will build him up in faith. Therefore, his good 
is to build the neighbor in faith, in his faith. Paul turns our attention to the example of our Lord Jesus Christ in verse 3. He says, we are not to please ourselves, but to please others, just as our Savior has done. He did not please himself, but instead sacrificed himself so that he might bring about both our good and our edification. The reproaches of those who reproached me fall on me. That is what Paul has written. He was referring to Psalm 69, verse 2. From this passage, we can see that Paul refers to Psalm 69, verse, verse 9, because of the gracious work and the saving grace of Jesus Christ, which is already spoken, and also it explained that Jesus did not please himself, but he was pleasing God, his Father, and he was doing it for humanity. His work, that is Jesus, was to please God and to please man. But only those who trust in him by faith and find his work of atonement pleasing we have a responsibility that when Jesus died on the cross, we are to accept his work, his redemptive work, and that is what is Paul talking about, that he praises God because those who accept him and believe in him are saved and called the children of God. When we speak, when we seek to please men, we must do so as our Lord did. We must begin by giving up any effort to please ourselves. We must further seek to do that which lead to salvation and building up of believers in Christ. Therefore, our sacrifice to please others is directed towards or leads towards the salvation and building up of believers or edifying the believers. To apply Paul's word in the, in the context of Romans 14 and 15, we praise our neighbors by putting up with the reproaches of those who would criticize our conviction and, and seek to change us rather than to accept us. Praising others include putting up the grief of others and to, uh, to, to, to put up with the griefs that others bring in our lives. This surely was true of our Lord Jesus who endured the reproaches of men and pressed on to bear our burden on the cross. The good which, the Christ, the, uh, which Christians should do to please the neighbor may very well produce not only disapproval, but reproach. Therefore, our unity is strengthened by the scripture and sustained by hope in Jesus Christ. When we go through disapprovals, 
when we go through reproaches, the word of God strengthened us to continue emulating Jesus Christ, pleasing others, and bearing with them with the hope in Jesus Christ. And I share this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.